everyone, this is Nikki of Nikki Hearts Card. I'm so glad to have you on my channel. Today we are looking at an inspiration piece and we are going to create an amazing rainbow card background. I'm going to take you through a few steps that I go through when picking colors and I'm going to show you how I created a fun background. The purpose of this hop is to show you the inspiration pieces and then show you what we came up with. So here is my rainbow background and I'm going to show you how I picked the colors and how I created some of the effects with masking. So when I pick colors for a rainbow, I usually start with five colors and I usually use a color wheel. This color wheel is from Katherine Pooler and it is a free download. I will link that below for you. Because I want to do a pastel rainbow, I started with a pink and I'm using the lightest colors on the color wheel. So I've done a pink, a yellow, a green, a teal, and a purple. And the reason that I don't have orange or other colors in here is because of how these blend together. To start my blend and make it extra special, I'm taking some Gina K masking paper and I'm tearing it roughly. So I want this to look like I have a rainbow behind a torn piece of paper. So I'm creating some masking that really makes this one level background look like I've put multiple things on it. Now you don't have to have Gina K masking tape to do this. You could tear a piece of copy paper and tape it down. You could take double-sided sticky notes and stick them down. Where the masking tape comes in handy is that it is adhesive, and so it sticks really well to the paper. You don't have to worry about your blending, pulling it up, and it's gonna give me that nice torn edge. So now that I've torn that edge, I'm just tearing another piece, and I'm gonna put that at the top. And with my space here I have already come in with the die cut that I know I'm using in the middle and I know about how much room I have on the front of this card so now that I know that everything fits I can go ahead and start my ink blending so I went on and got out five different ink blending brushes it's good to use different brushes because you will make your colors kind of muddy if you go in with just one brush and try to do this so I'm gonna try to keep this pretty evenly spaced but I'm gonna do it freehand I'm not marking off territory I'm just starting to blend now the reason that I picked yellow next is because yellow and pink are going to blend together perfectly fine and make and if they overlap each other it's just going to be a little orange which is another color of the rainbow so when you're keeping things in rainbow order you can skip a color and go back in and just it will kind of be there because you've overlapped your blending a little bit anyway and it gives the illusion that there's more colors there than you really have. The other reason that I love to do five colors in a rainbow is because then I know where the middle of my rainbow is. So I know that I've got to go right down the middle to get my colors even. So this green is my middle color, so I'm making sure I have it in the middle of the card. And I know that may seem a little bit weird, but if you're type A like me, then you want your things to match and to look symmetrical, and that is a great way to do it with an odd number. So here, once again, if the yellow and green overlap a little bit, it just adds to the color of the rainbows. Once I finish all of the colors, I usually go back in and make them a little bit darker and just make sure that they match. See how the blue and the green, they weren't completely touching. So I'm gonna go back in and make sure I go over it with both colors to make it look like a smooth transition. So this last purple, I go ahead and just start out a little bit darker because I know I'm gonna add color to each of these other sections to bring them up to the same brightness. And once I've got them all where I want them, it's time for the reveal. So you just pull this masking paper off. Look at this. Look at how crisp that line is. So beautiful. Still be careful picking it up because you have ink everywhere else. And it looks like you've put extra white paper there. So amazing. So that looks so amazing. Next, we're gonna stamp the pinwheels and we're gonna use the same ink pads. I'm gonna use a brush just to make sure that it stays very smooth and maybe lighten the color just slightly. That just keeps there from being a definite line and I feel like it smoothly stamps with these inks. These Catherine Pooler inks are very juicy and so sometimes adding a little brush to it helps or if you decide you just want it to be really dark, you can go direct to stamp. Another thing you can do to add dimension is when you don't have a layered stamp and you want a darker color, you can take Copics in over your ink and use them. This is Y15, and I'm just adding it to create a little bit of shadows in these pinwheels. 
So with this blue one, I'd already added my wow sparkles to it. And then I realized, ooh, I really love that shadow look. So I came in with one of those Copic markers and colored it in. I will make sure to list for you the Copic markers that match these colors that I'm using so that you'll know how I did those shadows. Here's a quick look at the green. I used the YG13 and did that same shadow right there just to give it a little bit more depth. And you could go in with darker colors and make this more obvious, but these are the colors that I picked. So it's Garden Party is the color of Catherine Pooler ink, and it's YG13 for the Copic. All of that will be linked in the description. To add the sparkles, this is not an embossing powder, it's actual glitter. So I'm just adding some glue and I'm gonna keep it consistent and add this glue in the same area on each pinwheel. So kind of the center of each one, I'm going to add the sparkles to. And they look so good, they're pink sparkles, but you can't tell with this background because it's such a light pink that it just looks like I've added amazing sparkles to each one check it out doesn't that look amazing oh it just looks so cute okay we got to do the stems or the handles whatever you want to call them to these pinwheels so we're going to add some c5 to these i originally thought i'd do them brown but i think a gray just looks better with um, a rainbow and so i'm going to do these as gray so a couple more things to add to mention i always put some extra die cuts behind these to just give them more bulk and it really makes it stand up on the card and look very cool. So I'm gonna add a couple of extra of those and I just use scrap paper behind these so that they're nice and bold. My next tip is to use double-sided adhesive foam to make sure that panel is nice and flat. So I'm applying this, I got that from scrapbook.com and I have um, a link for it. It's really, really nice on your cards. And so I'm gonna put my backing on here and then we're gonna add all of these fun pinwheels, make sure they fit in their appropriate color slot, basically how I <laughs> ink blended it. It's almost like it's got a little area that each one fits. And then we'll put a sentiment on it and this card will be finished. I do want to review with you just so you remember what it takes to create this rainbow ink blending and some tips and tricks. Okay, to remind you of those tips and tricks, number one is use five colors for your rainbow. I really like using a pink or red version and then some type of yellow because the two of those blended together gives you a little hint of orange, so you've got another color in your rainbow there. The other tip I would say is to go lighter on your background and then use the same color to stamp the items that are in the forefront. So see with this one, we've got a lighter ink blended background and then we use the same color and stamp these pinwheels which makes them brighter and perfectly coordinated with our other colors. And last but not least, make sure you try masking. You can do, you can make a mask out of regular paper. You can use masking paper. You could use post-it notes, whatever. It creates a little bit of extra drama on your background and really makes it look like it's two pieces. I feel like this ripped um, paper area looks like it's standing up off of my card. As I put the final touches on this card, make sure that you hit the like and subscribe button. I would appreciate that so much. Thank you for hopping along um, today with the video hop and make sure you check all of the other people's videos. I bet there are lots of rainbows since we're using this rainbow inspiration piece and I'm sure you would love them. So those will be linked in the description for you so you'll know where to go next. Have a great day and I hope to see you on the channel soon. Bye.